Welcome children, take out your savings book, chapter 11, the Union Legislature. Today's topic is Rajya Sabha. The upper house of the parliament of India is popularly known as the Rajya Sabha. It represents the states of the Indian Union as is the case with the Senate of the USA. Representation of Indian states in the Rajya Sabha differs from state to state on the basis of their respective population. Competition. The maximum strength of the Rajya Sabha can be 250 members. Number A. Not more than 238 represent the states and the union territories. Number B. 12 members are nominated by the president from among the persons of repute in various spheres of life. Example. Science, Art, Technology, etc. At present, the Rajya Sabha has 245 members. 233 of them have been elected by the states of the union and 12 members have been nominated by the president. The term, the Rajya Sabha is a permanent house. It cannot be dissolved like the Lok Sabha. Each member of Rajya Sabha is elected for a period of 6 years. One third of his members retire every 2 years. Eligibility for candidates. A person has to be at least 30 years of age to become a Rajya Sabha member. The Rajya Sabha has a chairman and a vice chairman, while the vice president of India is the ex official chairman of the Rajya Sabha. The vice president is elected by the House. Functions of Parliament Making laws. Parliament has the power to frame new laws and to amend or repeal the existing ones. There, this may be related to subjects from the union list or concurrent list. In certain circumstances, it can also enact laws on the subjects of the state list. It also has the power to amend the constitution by a two-third majority of the houses. A, a, law, a, a law is first introduced as a bill. It goes through three readings. In the first reading, copies of the bill are distributed among the members of the objective. Behind the bill is explained by the member of the minister who is introducing the bill. In the second reading, every clause is discussed and changes are suggested. In the third reading, the bill is put to vote. If it is passed, it goes on the other house where the same procedure is followed. When both the houses have passed the bill, it is sent to the president for approval. Only then does the bill become an act or a law. Ordinary bill. Ordinary bills can be introduced in any houses. Money bill. Money bill can be presented only in the Lok Sabha. Financial control. Parliament has control over the finances. No new taxes can be levied or a penny spent without this consent. The cabinet represents the budget before parliament. The budget has to be approved by the president. Parliament can propose amendments in the budget or even reject it altogether. The only limitation on its financial power is that it has no right to vote on the consolidated fund of India. Control over executive. Parliament exercises a fair amount of control over the activities of the government. During the question hour, any member can put a question and the concerned ministers are bound to answer them. This gives the executive alert. The members can move a call attention motion and adjournment motion on any urgent matter. If such a motion is permitted by the speaker, then the minister is charged of particular department is held answerable. The government is answerable to the parliament for all its acts of commission or omission. Parliament can pass a no confidence vote and compel the government to resign judicial functions. It can impeach the president and the judges of the Supreme Court and High Court if it finds that any of them has misused their power or floated the constitution. And with this, I am ending my today's class. Goodbye.